previously on MasterChef Legends. You are the top 15. Please welcome the legend, Morimoto. I cannot believe Chef Morimoto is in front of my face. Like, this is freaking nuts. All of you will cook us a stunning monkfish dish. Oh, my oh. goodness. You guys ready? No. 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 Check, please. I hope it tastes like it looks. It's a monkfish cook perfect. It looks stunning, and it tastes great. The best dish belongs to Kelsey. Well done. <laughs> If you're going to do a taco out of that incredible monkfish, you have to ask yourself, can I produce the best taco in the country tonight? I don't think I could even qualify that as a taco. The person leaving the MasterChef kitchen is Elise. Tonight, please welcome the patron saint of pastries, Sherry Yard. It's a bittersweet elimination challenge. You'll need to cook us a restaurant quality dessert that sees some home cooks <laughs> rising high. You've made this rich and decadent. It's delicious. I would put this on the menu. Just flipping dude on amazing. And others. Black garlic. It would be something you haven't tried before. Wow. Crumbling under the pressure. Come on, and I. I'd like to get it cooked tonight. Sure. She's here to help you. I am royally. It was just a recipe for disaster. I am shocked. How beautiful. Wow. Does that look? Dessert man. Uh, excited? Oh, man, I'm pumped up. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Yay! Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, we're back. We're back. Here we go. Round two. What we got going here? Uh-oh. Top 14. I'm feeling amazing. And I see all these desserts. And my heart is like, boom, boom. Because I'm like, oh, shoot. Desserts. It's not really my forte, but I know I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. I'll bring my Jersey-style flavor, and I'm going to do this. Dessert? Today is definitely redemption day. The mistakes that I made, this last challenge made me be at the bottom three. But today, I'm definitely going to show the judges why it was a good choice keeping me here. Welcome back, all of you, to the incredible MasterChef season of Legends. I hope all of you are ready to use your sweet tooth. You're going to need it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Being a legend means you cook what you know like an expert, and that you cook what you don't know with an open mind. That flexibility is the difference between good and iconic. Now, the legend visiting the MasterChef kitchen tonight has an infectious love for sweets. She yes. is one of the most influential pastry chefs in the world. Her desserts have been served at the Emmys, the Grammys, and the Oscars, earning three James Beard Awards along the way. All of you, please welcome the legendary Sherry Yard. <laughs> Welcome. Oh, thank you so much. You look <laughs> The Sherry Yard, I literally lose my mind. I mean, she is the queen of confection. And the fact that we get to have her as our mentor today is a dream come true. Oh, Sherry, it's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Oh, my Honestly. honor, my absolute honor. Now, take us back to the beginning. Who was the first big influence in your career that got you on oh, that path to bacon? My grandmother. She loved the whole pageantry of setting the table properly and then finishing the meal with just something decadent and delicious. And she taught me to taste with the blindfold on. Wow. So that I would know the difference between coffee and strawberry and different flavors. I love that. Mary Jane, your yes. face lit up. How excited are you that this incredible legend is here? It's just flipping dude on amazing. That's <laughs> all I can say about it. I watch you all the time. I just, y'all gonna make me cry. I'm just, it just. Come over and say hello. Come on. Come on, I'll give you Come a on. hug. <laughs> Come on, darling. Oh, he's making me cry. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> To have Sherry Yard, your idol, somebody that you look up to, right in front of your face, and to get the opportunity to meet her. She's here to help you, OK? Yes, here to help. Most amazing moment in my life. Now, tonight, we want all of you to be inspired by this incredible legend. You'll need to cook us a beautiful restaurant quality dessert. You can make something similar to the desserts you see here, or you can make something of your very own. And remember, this is the season of legends, and we are expecting excellence. You'll have access to the full MasterChef pantry at your disposal, so no excuses, right? 
baking is not my strong suit, like, at all. There's just so much science that's involved. It's not like, oh, a dash of this and a dash of that. No, like, once you put it in the oven, everything has to be perfect, otherwise it's gonna come out a mess. What are you looking for in these talented home cooks tonight? Delicious desserts. <laughs> I want to be able to wake up tomorrow morning, dream about your dessert, and want to drive right back. The home cook that wins this challenge will also get a complete full set of kitchen appliances from Breville. Oh. That's right. $5,000 worth. Things like amazing juicers, blenders, mixers, you name it. Anything you could possibly want to become a perfect baker at home. However, the bad news is the home cook that doesn't meet our standards tonight, and especially our legend Sherry Yard standards, will be eliminated. Make sure it's not you. Now, you will have 90 minutes to create a stunning restaurant quality dessert. Everybody ready? Yes, sir. Your 90 minutes will start. Now. Thank you. Yeah. Let's go. go. Let's go. Let's get him. Go on. Nope. I'm just Come on, go. MJ. Sorry, I'm Let's coming. do this. Woohoo! <laughs> Where's regular flour? Um, dark chocolate. Oh, yeah. Pomegranate, pomegranate. Does anybody see purple yam? Kiwis. Oh, I need kiwis. Can you let sugar? I'm so ready for a dessert challenge because, like, I got an apron with my dessert. Rich, rich, room scent yeah. butter, room scent butter. <clears throat> and so I get to focus on something that I know that I'm really good at achieving. This butter is all hard as <laughs> I want to impress Sherry Yard. So I am going to put sugar, spice, and everything nice into this dish tonight, man. Oh, eggs. I need eggs, I my need goodness. Oh, I do too. God almighty. Forget my brain if it wasn't attached. Hey, guys, three minutes is already gone. Yes, yeah, chef. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> Do we know where cooking spray is? Sorry. Good go. Someone dropped a blueberry. Safety hazard. Yeah, girl. Let's do this. It's our time to shine. Redemption. Redemption. Oh, the lemon just squeezed in my freaking eye. So I am making a Mexican chocolate cake with some salted caramel. It's something I make for my kids at home. And then definitely my twist on it with the different spices, adding the caramel, and I'm going to do some sugar work on top. So it's definitely going to be an elevated version. So I'm making a Maya lemon tart with um, a blueberry compote and a pistachio twill with a whipped cream. My dad's Sicilian. I grew up eating pistachios and lemons. I'm missing home right now, so I'm going to do a little bit of Italian cooking today. I'm making a white chocolate cherry pistachio bread pudding with a cream on glaze and a cherry puree. Sherry Yard is one of the best bakers of all time, and it's just an honor to be able to be making my dessert in front of her. In the zone, right? Yeah, right? So, Sherry, we've only seen Tay, Autumn, and Mary Jane make desserts. So for the rest of the 11 contestants, it's complete uncharted territory. Right. How good a dessert can you make in 90 minutes? Well, you just need to be smart and strategic, and you can do phenomenal things. Mm -hmm. Tonight, it's extra tricky, especially with desserts, because it's something you can't turn back on. Safely, no. we can go off piece and bring in right. you know, a different element, but this is precision. Every step is essential. What's the temperature of your butter? What's the temperature of your egg? So all of these little factors add up to big success or phenomenal failure. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Open up, open up, open up. 15 minutes gone, 75 minutes remaining. Your batters should be working now. Mm, I don't know if that's ripe enough, but we can sweeten it. No worries. Right. Aye. Yes, yes. Tell us what you're doing. So I'm doing a pomegranate tart with a cherry coulis, a pistachio brittle, and a Italian meringue. And why are you doing this dessert? Uh, because I want to take this like French classic and modernize it with who I am, especially living in uh, Turkey for a little bit. Pomegranate being a very big component or ingredient in Turkey. And so is it a curd? It's going to be a little bit more like a curd. I am going to put gelatin in it, but it's going to be uh, thickened with some egg yolks. I have to be careful that incorporation of that gelatin is very, very mm -hmm. difficult. Just make sure that curd is set before you glaze it. Yes. And don't get that too cold, otherwise it won't have that even distribution, yes, therefore yes. won't set evenly. And watch the eggs because Two little eggs, it won't set up. Too much eggs, it just tastes like eggy custard. Tastes it. like an omelet. Get that in the fridge Got quickly. It. Go get them. Right. Right, uh, young Chef. man, how are you doing? I'm doing a 
old school Georgia apple pie. And in addition to that, I'm gonna do an ice cream made out of vanilla bean and cardamom. Now, where are the apples? Uh, I'm gonna get them now after I do this, Chef. So all you've done in half an hour is made the pastry? No, I made the, I made the ice cream. It's not the, the most important thing. What's the hero? The pie. The pie. Uh, Come on. Sure. That needs to go in first. Oh, my gosh, yes. Your pastry has to be in the oven, and you've got to cook it. Yet yeah, the most important thing is done first. Absolutely. Alejandro, I'd like chef. to get it cooked. Yes, and, chef. I, and if you can't, you're going home. Alejandro, what's the hero? The pie. The pie. Uh, Come on. Chef. Your pastry has to be in the oven, and you've got to cook it. Yes, chef. And last but not least, that's when you do the your garnish. whipped cream and your garnish. The Prioritize yourself. Yes, chef. 50 minutes is not even in the oven. Come on, let's go. It's not wakey, too wakey. late. I'm running a little bit behind. I should have put this pie in. So now I'm in a rush. If I don't nail this pie crust, it's game over. Uh, Alejandro, so he's making uh, an apple pie, but sadly he's focused on the uh. ice cream, which he's making first. Coming together, coming together. He's way behind. You get the most important things done first. Absolutely. Come on, bring it on, bring it on. Ooh Just under 50 minutes remaining. Ooh. Doing good, Mama? Oh, we're feeling great. Let's do this. Hello, Lexi. What are you making? I'm going to make a molten lava cake with macerated berries and mint whipped cream. So very simple. Yes. But you're counting on the flavors to really make an impact. Yes. Now, you've made this before? <laughs> no. Wow. I don't have a lot of money to spend on groceries, so my version of baking is getting like a box of brownies and putting that in the oven. So I'm going to keep it super simple, and I hope it works out really well. How you cook this cake is going to say everything. So once we cut it in, it's going to have almost like this undercooked batter, but the outside has to be cooked. Yes. Better. All right. Thanks, guys. Come on. Working. Hey. Yes, sir. Hey. How you doing? Tell me about the dish. What are you doing? Today, I am making a orange decor pan pineapple upside down cake with a cherry compote. Canned fruit? Yes, sir. It's risky. Remember, we're after restaurant quality. OK, all right. Using canned fruit is taking a risk. But the judges are going to love the flavors in this dish. So, so the base of the cake, what is the flavor? It's a uh, thank you so much. vanilla, sugar, and, of course, the orange liqueur. Maybe a little sweet. I say sugar's my friend, it's not my love. So you have opportunity to tweak it a little. Okay. Like a little teaspoon of lemon juice. Okay. Lemon helps to pull things forward and it makes it cleaner. Okay. Yeah. Good luck, Ty. Thank you. Corner. Corner. Hey, Matt. Hey, how's it going, Joe? Good. How are you um, doing? Great. Now you're making a chocolate ganache? This is actually the cake batter right here. Cake batter. I'm doing a chocolate flourless cake with. 8 to 12 cloves of uh, black garlic in there. Black garlic. Yep, smashed up in there. Is that an inspiration that came to you today? Actually, I went to a grocery store, and I saw it for the first time. And I was like, well, let me see how I can utilize this in a dish. I like to try new things and experiment. And um, I'm not big into sweets, so this is my take on kind of a savory sweet dessert. Black garlic is this fermented, almost very uh, sweet it, molasses. -y. I it's love molasses -y it. and sweet, but it tends to have a very sort of deep background flavor that can potentially overwhelm. I'm going to try to cool it off a little bit. I've a cardamom whipped cream going over the top. Okay. And I also have a raspberry ginger coulis that's going to go underneath. We don't need to remind you that someone's going home tonight. I don't think it'll be me. OK. Good luck, Matt. Thank you. I know where's my boyfriend when I need him. That's good. Good. Okay. I am making a matcha creme brulee and a tropical fruit salad. I grew up eating all these fruits. Back in the Philippines, my dad used to grow these rambutans. All these will go together and complement the matcha creme brulee. It's going to be delicious, and uh, we'll see how it goes. Almost. Mm, they're so good. I'm very proud of my roots and my culture. So I'm using ingredients that are typically used in the Mexican cuisine. I want to show how the Mexican cuisine can be very delicious. A nighty. A nighty. Hello. Hello. What you got there? This is a macadamia nut crust. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make an avocado cheesecake topped with a dragon fruit wow. coulis. Avocado. I'm trying to get that creaminess from the avocado. It works really well with the cream cheese, so I hope to get that velvety. Now, I love the fact that you're using avocado as a fruit. Just yeah. make sure you got that citrus, that tartness in there as well. Uh, yeah, of yeah. course. Any other acid in the cream cheese base? Besides lemon and lime, no. So no sour cream, no, no, no sour fresh. cream fresh. I'm not going to bake it. It's just going to be frozen, so I'm going to have oh. a really cold cheesecake. Got it. No baked topic. cheesecake, which is risky. Tonight, I'd really want to see you bounce back. Uh, last week, and I made tacos that literally nearly sent her home. But oh, this is yes. a new This is my week. redemption. Good luck, young lady. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good luck. Such an honor. Amazing. I not want this to burn. Dang right. I've put too many eggs in the cream on place. 
Hi, Autumn, how are you? Good, how are you? I like the fact that you're tasting it. What did yeah. you just have? My little tleo. And then what else is going to go with it? So I'm doing a Maya Lemon Tot and a Blueberry Compo. So, Miss Autumn, are you worried about anything? I'm worried that my tot is not going to be set. It's almost there, though. You work in the restaurant industry? I've been a bartender for like seven years. So your dream would be to get out from beyond the bar and get into the kitchen? Yeah, so I want to open like a little like Japanese restaurant. OK. Japanese. Yeah. All right, yep. well, awesome. Best of luck to you, Autumn. Good Thank luck. Thank you. Trying really hard for you guys. <sighs> okay. Nice. 60 minutes gone. We're down to the last 30 minutes. Your dessert should be two thirds of the way through. Wow! Come on. Stop overthinking this, buddy. This is messy. Ugh, crap. I gotta start over. I think this mold lava cake, it's cooked too much, so it's not going to be like nice and gooey on the inside, <gasps> which is a really big no no. Oh, look. Lexi started over. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. And now I have to start my batter all over again. Slightly having panic attack. I regret making this chocolate cake. I'm just, uh, I just don't want to go home. Prepare dishes like a master chef at home with Master Chef Kitchen Appliances. Whip up delicious crepes, bubble waffles, or pressure cook like a pro with easy to use devices. Get your own elite line of master. We're down to the last 30 minutes. Come on, keep it going. I don't, Max. Could be better. I noticed that this moon lava cake is cooked too much, slightly having a panic attack. So I'm trying to make a brand new batter, get my cakes in the oven as quickly as possible, because I'm not here to cut corners. You know, we're going to do everything the way that it's supposed to be done. Oh my gosh. Whether that's a smart choice or not right now, I'm not so sure. But hopefully the judges see my effort and they appreciate my final dessert. Come on, Lexi, let's go. You can do it, darling. Come on, let's go. 22 minutes remaining, guys. Start thinking about the execution and the finishing touches. Oh, my God. You can do this, girl. And Yes. Desserts in your wheelhouse or not? No, sir. I'm not a baker. But I'm here to do something. I'm here to grow and learn. You can't do that unless you're tough. Tough and tenacious. Up. Tough, yeah, tenacious, that's and ambitious. What, I'm here for, right? what is the dessert? It's a olive oil rosemary cake with blueberry compote and candied Buddha ham. What would it mean leaving the competition across the dessert? Uh, it would suck. <laughs> I mean, I, I've done so much to get here. I sacrificed my family. I'm thinking about it right now, but I'm doing this for them. Yes. Make sure that cake is dense, Perfect. rich, and really sumptuous, OK? Yes, sir. Good luck. Thank you so much. Well done. Appreciate luck. it, you guys. Come on. Abe, how you doing, honey? Good, good, good. Finishing it up. Abe is doing a pomegranate tart. You don't hear a lot of pomegranate on the road no. because they're watery and acidic. Is that too risky? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. If it doesn't have that lemon juice in there, it will never set up no matter what you do. It's a big risk. Going in here? Yeah, appreciate it, man. Just picking up that pace. 15 minutes remain. Come on, guys. Five more minutes, he's coming out. Hello, Hi, Sue. Sue. How are you? How are you? I'm oh, good. Oh, banana I'm... desserts. I love banana desserts. I'm making a very Burmese traditional cake, and I'm going to elevate it by caramelized bananas. I'm going to flambe with some rum. Have you flambe right. before? One time. Just one, one time. time. So let's make some fire. Sure. Tilt your pan a little bit. Don't tilt, tilt. Flambe! Good job. Now let the alcohol turn off. Yes, chef. So now swirl it a little bit, and then that way you didn't break your butter. Yes, That chef. way it comes together, OK? Thank you so much. You got this, Mary Jane. Yes, ma'am. I'm working on it. Ah, this is so slimy. Michael. Michael. Doing, chef? Jersey's doing, in the house. Jersey's in the house. Now tell us about the dish. What are you doing? I am doing a uh, vanilla cake with cannoli cream, chocolate special ganache, topped with powdered sugar, and toasted pine nuts. You nervous? Um, I am a little nervous. I'm not really a baker. What's the inspiration? Going to battalion, can always be careful of those little chocolate pistols in there because those chocolates are melting. You're gonna put chocolate and then you grate it in there. Oh, okay. Okay, you don't okay. do it because it's just a, a different texture, that's all. But Italians with a chocolate with a cannoli. Can I give yes, you absolutely. advice? You're great at giving other people advice. <laughs> but I can give you advice, especially when it comes to cannoli. So just right. don't destroy the texture of that delicious sponge. Gotcha. Good luck. Thank Think you. about the textures, yes? Thank you, yes. Come together, come together. <laughs> Wow, there's a lot of excitement going on yeah. there, let me tell you. They're very focused. Boom. So Matt is going to go ahead and do this flourless chocolate cake. Black garlic. And black garlic. And wow. he actually said that he had put almost close to 12 cloves. He's going to back it up with tons of sugar, and hopefully that rich, fatty chocolate will sort of wow. mask it and temper it. We'll see. Perfect. Ah, that's hot. Now, Anne, she's doing a take on olive oil cake. 
can do this. My experience with olive oil cake is every pastry chef wants to get those like Tuscan flavors, right? So olive oil, salt, rosemary, all the savory things and turn them sweet. And sometimes if you don't have the touch, it can really go sideways. It could be dense. Yeah. Ultimately, it's all about the flavor, right? So that's, right. that's a big bit of jeopardy right there. Five minutes remaining. Sadly for all of you, your last five minutes. Come on. Behind, Carl. You've got to start plating, please. Please. Oh, oh it's dead. Good take. There you oh, go. Oh, look, he's making he's the got it. Look at that. Look at the taste, Cornell. Ah, uh, how are I... Abe, you've got to start plating, young man. Stop worrying about the garnish and focus on your dessert. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. 60 seconds remaining. Last minute, guys. Come on. Uh... Finishing touches now. Please taste everything on that plate. Make sure it's working. Oh, jeez. Gently, gently, gently. That's enough on there. Anai. Look at Anai. Uh-oh. Oh, oh no. no, look at the cheesecake. Looks like she left the base plate on. No. Oh. No, no, no. Come on, Mary Jane, please. I got this. Quick, quick, quick. Come on, Anai, please. Ten. Ten. Nine. nine eight, eight. Seven. Six. six five. Four. Three. Two. One. one and stop. Stop. Oh, oh, my goodness me. Oh, my gosh, we did it. We did it. Well done, all of you. I left it underneath the thing. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. But I got it's it on the plate. Okay. It's okay. That's beautiful, man. Very Thanks, rusty. Buddy. Thank you. I cut it to the wire, but I managed to put everything on the plate. I am royally. Why? What happened? Mine didn't set. Oh God, this is definitely not top three worthy. Oh, up, man. Didn't set enough. I mean, it's a curd. My biggest concern at the moment is whether or not the actual curd has set. I am feeling nervous that judges are going to hate the dish. <laughs> this might be my last time in the kitchen. I'm worried. Now, your task tonight was to craft a stunning dessert across the 90 minutes. And now we'd like to take an even closer look. Hey, pineapple upside down cake? I'm just hoping all the flavors blend together on the plate. Thank you. Now, what's the idea behind the pistachios? Want to give a little texture instead of just being so smooth? Thank you. And olive oil cake. It just gives you nice juxtapositions of the sweet and the tartness of the lemon, and hopefully that shows. I'm looking down at my plate, and I think it looks good, but I'm worried that the judges are going to think that what I put out is a little bit too simple. You a matcha lover? I love matcha. A lot of the other dishes out there are more complex than mine. I added more coconut milk to it. I'm kind of stressed out. I just hope the judges like it. Hey there, Lexi. Hello. What chocolate did you use? Chocolate? I used dark chocolate. This is the first time you've made this cake. Yes, correct. OK. So, Alejandro, you have a crust and ice cream. You pulled it off. Yes, ma'am. Are you yes, happy? Chef. I think it came out pretty decent. Watching the judges come through the stations is kind of exhilarating. Kelsey, beautiful sheen. Some people look stressed around me, though. I see a couple of crevices and some things that could have been maybe tightened up. I went out and I tried something bold. Is this the color you wanted on the crust, and you wanted that white? I feel pretty good. Matt, how do you feel about that black garlic mellowing out? Pretty good. I tasted the batter, so I know the flavor was there. And then I tried to lighten it up, too, with the cherry coulis and the cardamom whip. Good. Hey there, Mary Jane. Hello. That is one big bread pudding. How are you feeling about it? My crumb glaze broke, so oh. I wasn't happy about that. Yeah, you got a little curdled there. You know you could fix that. But it's still hot. Throw it in the blender, let it go to town and maybe a whisk of more water or liquid into it, and then strain it. I didn't know Thank that. you very much. Off I appreciate out, yeah. that. Good. Now, you don't look very happy, young man. Why not? I'm not quite sure if the curd set in. Most important is that custard in the center, so. Thank you, I Thank you. Thank you. Annie, how are you feeling? It didn't come out as firm as I wanted to, but mm. I like the flavors. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. So, some interesting uh, desserts there. Some great highlights. The lightness of that. That is a stroke of genius. I would serve that at a restaurant. The ones that we're is disappointed with. Too much ambition. It's kind of a disaster. Yeah. yeah. Happy? OK, great. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah.
Tonight, there were several good dishes. I'll be honest, there were a few bad ones. But first, we'd like to start off with highlighting the best dishes of the evening, so we can determine the winner of those amazing Breville appliances. Now, the first time cook would like to take a much deeper look at. Please come forward. Lexi. I cannot believe I'm in the top three in a baking challenge, and especially since I had to restart my batter all over again. This dish just represents everything that I've been wanting to show the judges from me, which is love and drive and hard work, and it turned out wonderful. Lexi, describe your dessert, please. I have for you today a molten lava cake with masqueraded berries and white chocolate drizzle over freeze-dried raspberries. So visually, for me, it looks stunning. Uh, restaurant quality has got that eye-catching execution. The telling moment for me is how it looks inside. Look at that. Nice. Very nice. Beautiful. Lexi, you know, it's delicious. Let's get that right. I would love to see a touch more red fruit coolie. Macerate the berries with some fresh mint and just give it that pop. But what I've learned from your performance is how you bounce back. This competition is not about peaking every night. It's how you finish, not how you start. That has the makings of a great chef. Well done. Thank you. A great chef never compromises. It's right or it's wrong. It's as simple as that. The guest is paying full price, so you're not going to give them less than. Well done. Thank you. For me, I think you were able to bake it in such a way that the inside stayed proper texture and consistency. The cake is beyond reproach. What can I say? Restaurant grade, 12 bucks on the menu, $11 a profit, no plates coming back. I love it. Thank Good you. job. Thank you, Good guys. Job. Thank you. OK, guys, the second dish we want to taste Please come forward. Tay. It's kind of mind blowing. Sherry Yard, one of the dessert queens of the world, is going to taste my cake. This is probably the best looking dessert I've ever created. I am thrilled right now. OK, Tay, give us a quick rundown on this dish. What we have here is an orange liqueur pineapple upside down cake with a cherry compote, some Brazilian style pineapples, and I mixed in a little bit of lemon zest to the whipped cream. Sometimes the simplest things are the most complicated. Yeah. And in the case of pineapple, especially since I saw you opening up that can, it has uh -huh. a lot of liquid in there. And it could have made this so dense and just gross around the outside. I mean, there's no other way for, to say it. Instead, what you brought us is a, really a restaurant style. I said I would put this on the menu. Thank you, Chef. This is the most exciting part of the dish for me is the grilled pineapple. You can see kind of like the moistness yeah, and the density this. of it. Thank you. Tay is delicious. And it's hard to believe when you close your eyes that you're eating canned fruit. And that's what I love about this dish. Yeah. It's canned fruit. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. The cake is lovely and light, and the pineapples mm -hmm. sing. For me, I, I just think it is teetering on the point of almost too sweet. But I think what you've gone ahead and done is pump the brakes in the right way when it comes to that very savory pineapple. It's a soulful dessert. Good job. <laughs> The next dish that we'd like to taste, please come forward. And. I am not a baker, so I'm relieved. I'm proud of my dish. I'm praying that all of my flavors that I put in there are going to be a party on the mail. Can you please describe your dish? I made an olive oil rosemary cake with a blueberry compote, and I also made whipping cream, and then I put just a titch of sugar. The visual on this cake and your process in cooking it tells us and everyone else in this room that you are a formidable competitor here because you come from zero in baking and you execute it, and that makes you a force to be reckoned with. The cake is delicious. The aeration is absolutely spot on. That density that olive oil brings weighs down that batter, so it's got the makings of a great dessert. Well done. Thank you. While they're delicious, I would have had the sauce separately on the side. Blueberries have pectin in them, so they're going to start to jellify, right? Mm -hmm. And so it kind of looks gummy. That's definitely a tip moving forward. Thank you. I love the flavor of the cake. I think this is a great example of how you introduce savory flavors into a dessert. I probably have 20 restaurants in the country right now that have olive oil cake and some version on the menu, and this is right there with all of them. Great job. Thank you so much. I can't. 
<laughs> Lexi, say, Anne, well done. We usually have a clear cut of our top three. But tonight, there were several home cooks that really impressed us. So the fourth and final dessert at the top tonight is... So the fourth and final dessert at the top tonight is... Michael. I'm really pleasantly surprised because I'm not much of a baker, but you know what? It shows my Italian heritage. I took cannolis and I took it to another level, I believe, for these judges. And I'm just very excited for them to taste it, honestly. So uh, describe the dish, please. We have a cannoli cake with a chocolate espresso ganache, top of toasted pine nuts and powdered sugar. The aesthetics of the way you assembled it, it's very good. It pops. But the chocolate work on the outside, it's just beautifully done. Awesome. Thank you so much. I can't wait to taste it. Again. What I like most about it, it has that fudgy frosting on the outside. And then the cake comes in, and the cake is spongy and delicate. Now, editing, a whisper of a brush of a little something. How about some espresso? Absolutely. Shows my novice in baking. Well, you've got the basics down. Awesome. Thank you so much. I love the crisp chocolate ganache on the outside that snaps as you go into that soft sponge. What do I do differently? Toast those pine nuts a touch more. Gotcha. But you've nailed the batter. The batter is delicious. For me, as a, as a person that grew up in New York City, I can tell you that this reminds me of all the little Italy restaurants. It has a real beautiful nostalgia to it. I agree. All you have to do is add Sambuca and Marlboro Lights, and I'd be sitting with my <laughs> grandfather eating it, because that's what it reminded me of. <laughs> really good job, Michael. Thank you so much. Nice job, Mike. Nice job, man. Good job. Um, so, four amazing desserts. I like Lexi. I thought what Lexi did was exceptional. Highlight for you was what? Ten. Ten. Ants was good, too. Uh, yeah, very good. It's tough, man. I don't know. They're all really good. All right? Yeah. Lexi, Tay, Anne, and Michael, only one of you can be the winner, and of course, the recipient of that incredible package by Breville. And we feel that the best dish this evening belongs to... Tay. Oh, 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 my God. I'm losing my mind right now. All four of you are safe from elimination. Please head up to the safety of the bathroom. Well done. Well done, well done, well done. Not only did I win the bacon challenge, but like I won $5,000 worth of new kitchen equipment. If you need a blender, holler at me, because I'm about to be having a garage sale with all my old stuff, man. Oh my God. Now for the bad news. There were three dishes that did not meet our standards tonight. And sadly, one cook will be going home. The first of these three dishes we'd like to take a much deeper look at. Please step forward, Abe. I'm a little bit nervous. Uh, I'm worried that the curd hasn't set. Then having Sherry Yard, a legend over here, taste my dessert is kind of nerve-wracking. Describe the dish, please. So this was a pomegranate tart with a pistachio brittle and a Italian meringue. On first glance, it looks incredibly elegant. The tart shell itself, very thin around the outside. Just wish it didn't look so pool-like and underbaked. Mm -hmm. Here's my big concern. Is this here, when you cut in there, oh, it's not set. And it's literally like a bathtub full of liquid pomegranate. The pastry is delicious, but the filling is set. Somebody is going home tonight, and we have to judge you on what you give us. The brittle is stuck on one side of my mouth, and the pomegranate seed's stuck in the other side of my mouth, and that's not enjoyable at the end mm -hmm. of a meal. You want the, the last bite of the night to just ring. I think that this dish reflects a bit of immaturity and inexperience on your part, sure. which is very unfortunate. It, it's odd enough, the flavors 
do work. My palate is Mexican, so I like bitter a sourness, you know? But the execution was flawed. Yeah. Thank you, Abe. Thank you. What a shame. The next dish that we would like to taste, please come forward. Anai. It is a bit disappointing, me being in the bottom three, but I think the strongest thing in my plate is the flavors, and I just hope that will keep me from going home. Annie, can you please describe your dish? What you have in front of you is an avocado no-bake cheesecake, topped off with a dragon fruit cream and a side of mango rum sauce. Anai, I am shocked that we still have the base of the actual cheesecake. <sighs> Oh. Was that an accident? It didn't set, Chef, so... It didn't set. Yes. OK. And what's the base, please? Base is macadamia nuts and graham crackers with a little bit of cinnamon. So you can see how it looks more like a dip than a cake. I'm in shock. The base is uncooked. I think you rushed the whole thing. I think tonight, had you baked it, it would have tasted way better. You cut corners when it came to even grabbing graham crackers. Your other chefs chose to make those from scratch. Perhaps in some cases not successful, but they made that effort. And choosing a large mold to put that no-bake cheesecake into, it was just a recipe for disaster. I know Mexican culture and its food. I see the reasoning behind the dish. It's just hard to get away from its execution. And being this is Master Chef Legends, to not bake or cook anything in a baking challenge for me is a disappointment. Thank you, chefs. Thank you, and I. Okay, the last home cook we need to see tonight. Please come forward, Matt. Definitely shocked. I'm in the bottom three. Obviously, what I tried didn't work, but I tried something new and unique that might be my saving grace. All right, Matt, tell us what it is. You have a black garlic chocolate flourless cake with a spice ganache, cardamom whipped cream, and a ginger raspberry leek. The big question I have, Matt, is black garlic going to make the most delicious chocolate dessert on the planet? That's my concern. The big question I have, Matt, is black garlic going to make the most delicious chocolate dessert on the planet? That's my concern. The actual flourless chocolate cake, it does taste very rich. But now I'm getting the garlic, which takes me back to my appetizer. Yeah. It isn't working because it doesn't match. You know what it tastes like? It's like you left coffees in the coffee machine grinds, and you take the rotten coffee grinds and you whip up a cake with them. You're absolutely right. Bitter. Chocolate is very heavy and dense, and what do you do? That's why passion fruit goes well with it, lavender goes well with it. These are flavors that work well together, and they sing. This doesn't sing for me. If there's one saving grace, because it's flourless, the density of the chocolate somehow is able to squash a little bit of that garlic flavor. Fortunate for you. OK. Thank you, Matt. All right. Right, you three, you've given us a lot to discuss. We need to talk this out. Excuse us. I think. There were some grievous mistakes made in some of these desserts. Abe, too much ambition. It's yeah. kind of a disaster. Yeah. Matt took a big risk with the black garlic. Yeah. It was. Isn't that a huge effort compared to the cheesecake, which wasn't a cheesecake? She didn't cook anything. Yeah. And the base of the oh, mold yeah, was on the plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What would happen if that was in the restaurant? Oh, my God. It'd be catastrophic. It's obvious. Yeah. Yeah. Be clear? Mm -hmm. Yep. Sure. sure. That was tough, Abe, Anai, Matt. What we did confirm is that one dessert does not deserve to move forward. Sadly, the person leaving MasterChef is Anai. Unfortunately, the cheesecake hadn't set, and then the actual base of the cheesecake mold was served on the plate. 
Abe, Matt, please say goodbye to Anai and head back to your stations, please. And I, you came in like this firecracker that really lit us up. I'm hoping that you'll pick up everything you've taken from this incredible kitchen and go forth. Definitely, it was a wonderful experience. It was wonderful getting feedback from the legends. I see such talent and opportunity with everything that you did and experiences, learning from these mistakes. And you're going to do it, and you're going to be great. Please, place your apron on your desk and have a safe trip home. Love you, girl. It's a win to have made it this far. I'm definitely going to keep cooking. I'm just so very blessed to use this as a learning experience, and I plan to take it to propel me into further and greater things in life. Love you! What a night. Join me in thanking this incredible legend for giving up her entire night to be with us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Now, all of you, get some rest and get prepared for your next extraordinary challenge. Because if you're not careful, you might meet some very tough critics. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Amazing. Good job. Next time on MasterChef Legends, please welcome the legend of the seven turn, Michael Mina. <laughs> The man himself is here. Lift! It's the first yes. mystery box challenge Are you kidding? of the season. I want to vomit. <laughs> and let's go! In this beefy battle. Oh, what are we doing, guys? I'm screwed. I don't understand it. The stakes are higher than ever. It's going to be tough. I've never faced anxiety like this. I would be happy walking into any restaurant and getting this dish. To avoid elimination. I'm a little bit in shock. Please place your apron on your desk. Have a safe journey home. I'm so sorry. Say goodbye. Potato, potato.